With the next generation of gaming consoles on the horizon, I've been mulling over the releases of the PS4 for the past seven years. And uh, apologies to any Xbox One fans. I usually hold on to the consoles for at least their main life cycle, but uh, the Xbox One just didn't do it for me, man. That's a story for another time, though. The PS4 has more than proven its worth for me, with new IPs, remasters, and remakes. So as I was journeying through its catalog, a thought came to me. What was the game that made me pull the trigger on purchasing it? As a side note, I've learned better than to blindly purchase a console at launch, because let's face it, these launch titles don't really end up being the best selling points. I mean, looking back, some of the titles available from the start, for the PS4 at least, were Killzone Shadowfall, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, Knack, Call of Duty Ghosts, and Battlefield 4. Black Flag I ended up getting for my PC, I wasn't a big enough fan of Killzone, and I was worn out on COD and Battlefield, and Knack was, well, Knack. It actually wasn't until about half a year later that I finally got the game I was waiting for, Infamous Second Son, the third installment of the super-powered mutant action adventure game developed by the lovely people at Sucker Punch Productions. And I'll be honest with you, after playing through it and deciding to make a video on it, I think it's a pretty worthwhile experience still. I actually forgot how solid the intro to this game was, running away from your brother trying to hide from facing any repercussions for your vandalism. You didn't really have any powers yet, and it was just a small two minute platform section, but it really felt dynamic. From how the camera moves with bigger jumps and how nice it felt to land on each platform, of course I'd be dumb not to mention how pretty the scenery is too. Second Son's presentation is something to admire. Being based in Washington State in the Seattle area, there's a lot of beauty to discover. The warm and cool colors complement each other very well. The compact city areas made the city feel very fluid and alive. In games like this one, I'm glad photo modes are becoming more and more common. That being said, the colors can be a bit of a hindrance in it as well, especially when it comes to the nighttime and neon powers. The time of day and weather changes according to the story as you progress, not leaving you much choice in the matter. Whenever I had the neon power equipped, it was always a gamble to see if it paired well with the time of day in game. Even with certain brightness settings enabled, I found myself either being blinded or just plainly lost in the darkness. Speaking of the powers, I felt we were actually decently equipped for the first game in the series to have multiple. Smoke, neon, video, rock. You get ample time with three out of the four by the time you hit credits. There are certainly unique traits and perks to having each one, but I did find myself wanting more variety out of each one. Each power comes equipped with a shot, a charge shot, bomb, dash, some kind of disable, and of course, an ultimate move. It was hard not to compare Delson's new abilities to those that he stole from. I mean, instead of having a neon shot, why not have Fetch's laser beam? It's nice to have a quick burst from the video power, but I'd like to summon angels and demons too, separate from the upgrade you get for the invisibility field. It's obvious the powers have to be well-rounded for the sake of the player, and that is to ease difficulty. The way power sources are scattered across the map though makes me feel like it could be possible to be just a bit more bold with each power. They're different enough, for sure, but the same vibe carries over from each one sat in the back of my head. After the main story is over and you're able to free roam the areas and clean up any extra DUP areas you neglected, it's a fun time stomping everyone with your powers. However, it's a bit of a double-edged sword. After you clean up the whole area, your only real option is to start over. Not much post-game content is probably one of the worst things about Second Son. The gameplay overall does have that early slash late 2010 feeling going for it. I don't think you'd be off by saying there are some Assassin's Creed and Far Cry vibes, maybe even some Arkham Asylum vibes too. The platforming may have some excellent feel to it, but when it doesn't work, it just doesn't work. The climbing can feel magnetic at times, especially if the areas are just a bit too spaced apart. It's nice to have the dash powers of Neon and Video, but if you want to keep using your main power smoke more, well you just gotta deal with things how they are. I didn't really end up using the melee attack all too often, especially on an expert difficulty run through. I mean, it was nice to be able to get in and do significant damage, sure, and the attack reminded me of the combat style from the previously mentioned Arkham games, but I'm mostly in it for the powers, you know? It's even harder when you're doing a good karma playthrough, as accidentally killing someone can reset your super on top of reducing your good karma. When it comes to sandbox games such as this, I do think it can be kind of tricky to get down the right formula, which is why I'm more lenient on Second Son. As a conduit, the world is your oyster. Since, you know, you have these crazy-ass fucking powers. 
so going around each area and doing whatever the hell you want is fun. I think the issue with the sandbox style in this game, however, is a lack of variety. It's not too big like some of the later Assassin's Creed's, I'm looking at you, Origins, but it also doesn't necessarily feel lived in. You have the bigger objectives, like taking down the DUP outposts and liberating the area once you've cleared a certain percentage. Then you have the smaller ones, like destroying hidden cameras, finding sleeper agents, spraying graffiti, and collecting data caches from a DUP informant. Unfortunately, when you get down to it, it's more of a chore to do. As a small note, the motion and touch controls are actually a really nice touch. Pardon the possible pun. It might be awkward, but spray painting and pushing objects or draining powers with a touchpad is super satisfying to me. The added detail of the color of the PS4 controller changing with the color of the spray is dope as well. Also, when you shake the controller, it makes the can shaking sound, and that's some good shit. Infamous's whole thing was about choosing your own path between good and evil, with the evil path half the time being much worse than you thought it'd be. I mean, Infamous 2's ending had you killing your friends and becoming the most evil and powerful thing on the planet. Hell, it was supposed to be canon, but the devs looked at the trophy data and found out that most people chose the good ending, so that became the canon ending instead. Back to Second Son, the karma choices and overall narrative is where I feel the game suffers the most. You can easily guess how it goes, which isn't inherently bad. Even the most cookie-cutter storyline can be done well, if written properly and with interesting characters. There's some good stuff here, like the dynamic between Delson and Reggie, a newly formed conduit and his brother, a police officer, who has a firm stance on justice and what's right. The main villain is interesting enough, but just seems to kind of take the back seat after a first offense. The best character in the game is Fetch, however, and the worst being Eugene. I'm pretty sure the nerdy virgin trope was dead by the time the 90s ended. Also, the dude's straight up wearing a Hentai Haven t-shirt? One thing I feel about Second Son is that it had a lot of potential to be set up for a solid sequel, especially if they took the evil ending as canon for this one. Standing on its own, however, it has flaws and does start to stumble. Now, I don't want to make it seem like I'm ragging on Second Son too much. Like I said at the start, I actually thoroughly enjoy it for what it is. It is, however, very much a product of its time. Second Son is a stumble in the franchise, but definitely not a fall. But I'm not done just yet. They did end up releasing some standalone DLC titled First Light. Now, it's not going to take you long to beat the main campaign of First Light. In fact, you can pretty easily beat it in one setting. You play as Fetch approximately two years before the events of Second Son, and get to live out her backstory as her and her brother seek freedom. Fetch was already the best character in Second Son, and with her being even more flushed out here, it just solidifies the fact. Actually, playing as Fetch feels nice. While it's obviously going to be similar to Delson, she does have her own thing going on, which is helped by her own upgrade tree. You only get to explore one section of the mini-map, but considering the scope of the content, it fits just fine. The area seems more lively, and the different challenges you get to do are a nice breath of fresh air. I'm aware that it's still the same enemies, but during the main game I didn't find myself getting caught between the Akurans and the DUP all too often. Being a conduit in the middle of those firefights was fun as it was hectic. The best part of the DLC, however, is adding actual post-game content. There are three different arenas, each with different enemies and an unlockable harder version. Also, if you have an infamous second sun save, you get to play as Delson, which is something I would have expected. Overall, good DLC. Not exceptional, but not terrible. And since it's so compact, there's not much more to go on about. I'm glad it was released though, as it was a step in the right direction. While the devs have moved on to a new project, I truly do think the series deserves to be revisited in the future. I still think it'd be interesting to make the Evil Root canon and possibly go with a single power or more focused conduit. Maybe the story could involve Fetch or Eugene betraying Delson after him becoming some sort of tyrant, aiding the new player character. Or perhaps you could play from the perspective of a member of the DUP. The soldier could end up learning he's a conduit after a bit and tries to keep it a secret from the rest of the force. It could open some solid good and evil routes. If you haven't got to play a second son or even the first two infamous games, I do recommend them. They aren't perfect, but as a whole package, I truly think there's something there to admire. Hey everybody, uh, thanks for watching the video. Uh, hopefully this video makes it out on time uh, for my one year anniversary since I started making videos. Uh, May 25th, 2019 was when I uploaded Unlocks and Gaming, uh, and I about had a massive panic attack just pressing the uh, upload button on there, and uh, I've come a long way, I think, in this year. Uh, I'll just keep this short. Just just thank you if you've uh, liked my content so far. I'm working on it. Sometimes it just uh, takes a bit longer for me to uh, 
get the gears turning. I hate writer's block. I hate not making my monthly quota, but I think switching to the um, when it's done format is probably the best for me. Um, you can keep up to date with me on my Twitter at the Cosmic Bones. I'm always plugging it. It's uh, I usually post some kind of stuff going on there when it's not just me being a total degenerate. Uh, anyways, thank you again for watching this video. I look forward to making more stuff, and I hope you enjoy uh, what's to come.